Hi, Nate Mullen, AKA The Illuminator here. Today I'm here to talk about our hub method of wiring, uh, specifically called the equalizer hub method of wiring. One of the things that we do is, and I don't believe we talk about it enough, is fusing. So we give you a weatherproof fuse in every one of our hub kits. And I can't stress the importance of fusing. So just think about this, we all own an automobile. Every single automobile manufacturer in the world has fusing on the electrical wire. People have a tendency to believe that low voltage, it isn't, it isn't dangerous, it's safe, it's easy. That's not true. We all, it's 12 volts in a car. Every single wire in that car is fuse protected to the load. So that's very important. You don't just open up the automobile and it's a 50 amp fuse or a 20 amp fuse, it's a one amp fuse, a half amp fuse, a two amp fuse. And that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna do something from today forward Right, raise your hand, promise to me, today forward, we're gonna fuse per load. So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a connection. And I can't stress the importance of a connection enough. Every single time, well, 99% of the time, I'm on a job site and there's issues and I'm troubleshooting, it's the connection. It's always the connection. So I'm gonna show you here the importance of a connection. Let me get my home run wire here. This is the wire that goes from the transformer to are, you can make sure the transformer's off. It is. So this is the wire from the transformer to our hub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip the wire here. And I'm gonna take a second here, I'm gonna show you the importance of stripping. This is a home run wire from the transformer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply strip the ends of it off. Okay, do about maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch. I'm gonna take now all the wires from my fixtures. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna hook up three fixtures today. And you're going to notice that what Unique does, we do a lot of cool things. We have pre-stripped the wire for you, all right? So it makes it extremely easy. So all I have to basically do is do this and then separate the wires and it's already pre-done. Okay, now that all the wires are peeled back, I'm going to grab a connector. And what we supply here at Unique Lighting, which again, I'm going to stress, it's always the connection. I'm not a big wire nut guy. Um, I like mechanical connections. This is really the only connection that you can actually get that's 100% guaranteed because it's mechanical, never to ever fail. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take my wires, and all wires have writing on it. They're all written, okay? So yeah, as you can see, there's lettering on it. In a hub method of wiring, polarity is not really important, but it's a good habit, you know, especially if you're using some of the other traditional methods of wiring like daisy chain and different things, polarity does matter. So I grab the writings, okay? Gather them up just like this, okay? Just, just gather the wires together like this. I grab my connector and I grab my screwdriver right here. Threads will go toward the insulation and I simply Connect it up, gather, push all the copper all the way up so you can see all the copper is up there and then tighten this bad boy up. Grab my pliers, hold on to it, and again I just give it a good tight snug. I give, I give them a little haircut right here. All good to go, ready to put the cap back on. At this point what I do is I will put a loop in it right now that identifies it as my common but it also when I throw it on the ground and lay it on the ground which I will in a minute it will it will not short out and touch together so now I gather up my hots and at this point I'm not gonna I'm gonna grab my fuse pre-stripped as you can see I'm gonna grab my fuse and I'm gonna put it together with my hot wires okay like that Grab my nut, and you can fuse either the hot or the common, it doesn't matter. I generally, just because of my electrical background, always do the hot, whoop, little haircut. Okay, now, those are, my, those are my wires to my fixture. Now I take the home run wire, the hot of the home run wire, I put it to the other side of the fuse. And again, make a real fast, quick connection here.
And I generally only unscrew this screw right when, I don't pre-do it because I've, I've learned that if I pre-do it, a lot of times I'll lose that little screw because I do it too much. Whoop, even I mess up. Put the threads on wrong. Okay. Okay, that's how simple it is. So imagine I've got three fixtures now, I've got three connections. I could have 10 fixtures, I'm gonna have three connections. So the fewer the connections I have, the fewer the problems I have. So now, I'm gonna illustrate the power of the fuse. We give you a pre-installed 20 amp fuse. We also supply you with a 10 amp and a 5 amp fuse. What we wanna do is fuse per load. So I'm gonna leave the 20 amp fuse in here. And now I'm gonna connect it at the transformer, which is already connected. I'll be right back. Now I've got some load, I've got some fixtures on. So now I take Mr. Amprobe. Where is Mr. Amprobe? And I turn it on. And I will go to the amp setting, which is right here. A little curly cue means alternating current. And the thing that I have to stress to everybody is we've always been pushing and selling amp probes through our seminars and telling you where to buy them. Um, so you may have an amp probe. But what you need to know now is you need to use a true RMS amp probe. With the advent of LEDs, an old amp probe, non-true RMS, it won't pick up the electronic driver. So it's extremely important that you check your AMPRO and make sure it says true RMS. So now it's as simple as this. I take the AMPRO. On one of the wires, it doesn't even matter. I take and I put the AMP probe around it, all right? And it is pulling 0.2 of one amp. It's almost unbelievable. This is the power of the LEDs. So that means I can put a one amp or two amp or three amp fuse in it. But you know, we supply you with a five amp fuse. So now what I'm going to do is I can either unplug this or turn the transformer off. You may feel comfortable turning the transformer off, go ahead. And now I'm gonna put a five amp fuse in it. Okay, you'll notice too, I like to point out that we pre-grease everything, right? For oxidation, you'll notice that there's grease in there. Put the fuse in, put the cap on, I am good to go. I have now got a five amp fuse in here. So what that does, turn it back on, all right, is it protects me from the shorts. So now, system's working perfect, somebody comes out, and they're gonna go put a shovel through the wire. So let me go grab a shovel. Couldn't find a shovel, but I found a pair of strippers which will act just like a shovel. So as you can see, the light is on. It is working, it is in the ground. The gardener is gonna come up, take his shovel, and he's gonna do some damage to my wiring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna back like a shovel, and I'm gonna go in there. Boom, wire's not even cut all the way through, right, which happens all the time, but it's shorted out. The wire's still gonna work. We're gonna have some wicking corrosion down the road, but I generated a short. So now, because I've am fuse protected, all I have to do is replace the fuse. I have protected my system. So for you to look at this fuse, and you can pull it out, you can see that the fuse is broke. There is no integrity between the, the connection and there's no, there's no metal. The problem if we don't fuse protect at the hub and we rely upon a fuse or a resettable circuit breaker in the transformer, a 25 amp resettable circuit breaker in the transformer, is probably not going to trip. So now we, have a, now we have a meltdown problem, a potential, yeah, I hate using the, the F word, the fire, but we could have a huge problem, which is, not, which is obviously not good for us and the homeowners. So we wanna make sure we fuse pr protect per load. Appreciate you paying attention. Um, if you got any questions, you can call me or my team. And I want you always to visit uniquelighting.com. And also, I get asked about my tools. So I'm gonna take a minute on our outtakes, tips and tricks. I'm gonna show you my tools.